Hi, I'm Greg Keller. I'm GemCloud's Chief Product Officer, and we'd like to welcome you back again to our whiteboard presentation series. Today, I want to talk about GemCloud's system management capabilities. It's one of the most widely used parts of the product, so we wanted to kind of go through a little technical deep dive on how this whole world works between GemCloud managing uh, disparate heterogeneous operating systems, specifically Windows, Mac, and Linux. So let's use our trusty whiteboard pen and walk you through the process. We'll generally build two components here. One is the Jump Cloud platform. So we'll call this guy JC Platform. This is, by every definition, the core directory service. And we'll demarcate this just for the fun of it with the open internet. We'll make an assumption that this endpoint, it could be a Linux server up on AWS or GCP, or it could be your MacBook or Windows machine, um, uh, you know, at home, just connected through the internet. So we'll, we'll just demarcate this with a symbol of, we'll use a laptop. As you know, as Jump Cloud users or evaluators, they, the directory is exactly what it sounds like. There is a user account that is created um, representing you uh, within the core directory infrastructure. And this, you know, obviously has a number of pieces of information on it, like, you know, metadata, like your name, but also your core password hash, which is obviously in this, you know, uh, highly encrypted and bcrypt and sort of stored in our um, cloud-based infrastructure. So here's the interesting part. When I speak with a lot of um, Active Directory customers, they're like, well, how does this work? You're like, how does the machine join to the domain? And as you know, in that world, the operating system, Windows, is tightly intertwined um, through the Kerberos methodology and or integrated Windows authentication with the Active Directory domain controller. So this is not how we operate, uh, first and foremost. The, the end result becomes very similar in many ways, but we utilize, in lieu of Kerberos, um, we utilize our own proprietary system agent. We'll just you know, utilize this symbol, agent, that is deployed on your endpoints. These can be mass deployed, um, utilizing various services or individually installed on the machine itself. So let's talk about that transaction first of all. The interconnectivity between the machine and quote unquote your domain, which is really your tenant in the Jump Cloud directory, is all done through a deep um, manufactured PKI relationship. So on each endpoint is a private key. We are manufacturing that key and encrypting it and are responsible for its safety and security on the machine. Meanwhile, your tenant has its corresponding information. So we know that this machine in a secure sense is all tightly um, uh, sort of integrated with your directory component. And we're doing all this through mutual TLS. So that is the first sort of component that you need to understand. The agent, its architecture, and its sort of binding to, um, uh, to the cloud-based directory. So now from an administrative perspective, what else is going on? You as an administrator have populated the directory with the user account, uh, but when that agent is installed, you now have a device management sort of uh, aspect to Jump Cloud. So let's split this real quick. And you'll start seeing your registrations of machines wherever you put this agent. It starts to bring back tons of interesting data. We'll call this guy, you know, Greg's Mac. Let's assume that that's the host name. And back here on Jump Cloud is Greg's Mac. And we're telling you all that we can about that machine. Its serial number, whether it's on or off, a number of different, you know, again, pieces of system-based metadata. So again, think of GemCloud having like two object types that it's managing in this relationship. Number one is the user object, number two is the system object. So now, but here's the rub, like, okay, I'm Greg, I've got my di directory-based identity, um, but how do I log into the machine? Right? 
This begins the process of explaining what, now that you've got the agent on the machine, what the Gem Cloud directory can do. Let's start with the very first thing, user account management. We'll put that over here. One is user management. The Gem Cloud administrator um, will have two options. The first is they have a brand new machine and there are no user accounts on that machine. They can then bind the user to the machine and Gem Cloud will instantaneously um, send the user account down and lo and behold you have now the user account, a local user account now managed on this machine. Let's pause there. We are not um, proxying the operating system per se and utilizing some um, you know, buffer or again proxied authentication layer. We're using the native um, local account management APIs and interfaces to both create and distribute the user account on the machine or endpoint um, and of course it's password. Um, so great, you've got the user account on there. But I said there's two options. What if you are a, 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 you know, a person with pre-existing accounts on there? So I've got this user account, uh, his name is you know, Gregory Keller. That's the short name, the username. Assuming that the username in Gem Cloud, Gregory Keller, is the same that's on the endpoint, when that, is, when that user is bound to the machine, we will bind, quite literally unify, this version, the Gem Cloud version of the identity, with that version and start its ownership, meaning password propagation, or in this case, password hashing, to the machine, um, so that we are now owning that account, all right? So that's the first thing, user account management. So we've got the user on the box. The second thing, now that you have the agent there, is command execution. X, I'll just say command exe. What this means is from the Gem Cloud administrative console, we'll sort of put this here, admin console, the Gem Cloud administrator can start writing scripts. PowerShell, Bash, or Shell, or Python, it doesn't really matter to us. We then can execute those scripts against these machines. There's you know, wide myriad uses for this, obviously, for small maintenance updates on machines. In other cases, people will push software. I don't want to confuse that it's like an SSCN thing. They'll usually grab the software. The command will grab software from an S3 bucket or something and then deploy it on the machine. Uh, this is most often used for policy enforcement, which is another aspect of Jump Cloud that is forthcoming. So let's go there. Three, policy management. In the world of Active Directory of things called GPOs or group policy objects, in our world, our product will soon release its policy system. Again, for, uh, and I should have uh, you know, written this down, for Windows, Mac, or Linux. What this means is the Gem Cloud from the administrative console, and because the agent is on the machine, can point and click security policies, behaviors for that matter, and push those down to the machine. You want all of your machines to have their screensavers turned on. Set that in the admin console, the agent listens to those events and will enforce that um, that behavior on the machine, the screensaver as an example. So policy enforcement is huge. The fourth area is multi-factor authentication. When and if the user, um, or I should say, when and if the administrator sets MFA for the machine, the user, in this case, would see on login their avatar, right? There's my smiling face. Uh, they'll see their password field, and then Jump Cloud will introduce an MFA token field with a TOTP generator like Duo for mobile or perhaps Google Authenticator. We will concatenate that MFA key and your Jump Cloud password uh, to get access to the machine. Very important for companies that need to hyper secure their endpoints, especially for those who travel. So that's obviously very important. And the fifth is. Uh, event logging. So Jump Cloud has an events API. What this means is we're storing data about the authentication and other behaviors and of uh, the events on that machine. 
uh, as an example, let's say it's not a, a desktop endpoint or a laptop, let's say it's a Linux um, host, and you want to know what user was authenticating when from what IP address, and you are an American company, but clearly you know, a Syrian IP address is probably not the right uh, authentication coming in, and you can take measures in order to stop that authentication. So again, this is the transaction. Um, one last thing that I will say, um, you know, Jump Cloud um, is responsible for the emission of passwords. So a lot of customers will ask, you know, can my users change the password on the endpoint like they can in Windows, for example, when it's connected to a domain controller? The answer is no. Um, the user, uh, from their user, this says user portal, will go into their user portal, they see all of their information, including their password, they will change their password. All endpoints, including their system endpoint, will immediately be updated. So I want to make that clear. There is no inbound transaction um, from the machine into our, our corpus, our infrastructure. We have to, again, tightly manufacture the secure encryption and transmission of that hash to the endpoints, again, a system being one of the endpoints connected to the Gem Cloud core directory. So that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this sort of brief overview of how the system agent works, what kinds of things that it does for you uh, in its current format, and the fact that all of this is done for Windows, Mac, and Linux. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back and see us again on more of our whiteboard presentations. Thanks for joining.